Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin. I'm Jordan. And we're here to talk about toys. I brought some Land of the Lost stuff. I've, I've noticed, actually. It's, <laughs> it's kind of taken over the set. It is uh, a lot of it. I'm feeling like I'm a little bit in the land of the lost because I'm, I'm lost amongst all these figures. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so bright with these orange packages. Everything's orange and green and yellow. It's just, uh, it feels, it's a very summer feeling, mm, uh, yeah. which is odd because it's a very winter time. Yes. <laughs> right now for us. It's a, it's, a, it's a radioactive kind of feel in here. Yeah. With these gnarly colors from the 90s. Yes. All right, so our news segment today is actually some Toys R Us news. Uh, poor Toys R Us. So Toys R Us, the, di- <laughs> the directors are facing new fraud claims over the bankruptcy. So uh, the board members and owners face new allegations of fraud and breach of duty over the company's 2017 bankruptcy, is what's being claimed. Yeah. And basically, the directors, um, they're saying new, that the plans that they were putting in place to leverage the the financial situation um, was resulting in them getting bonuses up front yeah. while workers were not getting paid at all. Yeah, no, I heard stores. about that when that was happening. Yeah, yeah. so but I mean, there's a, so there's a, there's a whole new suit, and um, they're they're trying to fight it here. So basically, uh, the company struggled for a decade with crushing debt ever since the 2005 leverage buyout. Yeah, and uh, you know, knowing that. Knowing the turnaround wasn't feasible, that they yeah. the, the structure of the deal was was unattainable. They, you know, it's like the interest rates are too high. There's no way we can pay this back. Uh, the owners and the directors should have ordered a liquidation to begin in August of 2017, preserving the ability of Toys R Us to repay its employees and creditors in full. Uh, is what the <clears throat> the suit is claiming. I mean, that sounds accurate. I mean, honestly, like. Not for nothing, but the I think it was Bain Capital. Yeah, they're um, one of the the people that were part of that buyout. It's the same people who did the exact same thing to KB Toys a decade prior. Yeah, uh, and it's unfortunate, but like I mean, the writing was on the wall the second they got into that deal. Right, uh, and it's unfortunate because the uh, Toys R Us. I personally uh, actually worked there as a manager for some time, okay. and uh, I I have a deep deep love for Toys R Us as a company. Um, so it just sucks to know that the people in charge screwed over all the people yes. who poured their hearts and souls into making that company what it was. Um, and it's just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's, uh, so it's such a shame too, because the people that are getting these bonuses and are making these decisions yeah. m- are making more than a living wage, Absolutely. making very, doing very well financially. And then the hourly employees are the ones that are getting taken advantage of, which exactly. really sucks. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Cause like I said, I knew even after I'd, I'd been out of there for some time when they shut down, but they, okay. I knew a lot of people who were still in the company, um, and it just really was awful to watch it become what it became and dwindle into nothingness uh, at the end. So it's, I, I love Toys R Us, but like, yeah. I feel like the people, the people in charge at the time shouldn't have gotten bonuses at all because clearly they screwed up enough that the company was dying. Yeah, uh, and I, I feel like at that point you forfeit any bonuses and should probably be fired. Yeah, rather than getting a payout, it's it, it. There need there has to be some sort of reform or or accountability on stuff like that. You you can't have a company go under, especially yeah. like a publicly traded company like Absolutely. that, where the stockholders have a you know have have. There's a responsibility to those stockholders, yeah, and then the internal people making the decisions that are dooming the company, making out like bandits. Yeah, it just feels like a weird cop out. Like, of course they're going to give themselves a bunch of bonuses because right. they know that they're about to lose the company anyway. So right, might might as, as well, well stockpile what they can while they can. Go for the coffers before there's nothing left. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just sucks honestly. Yeah. Uh, so like, I hope that uh, every single one of them gets taken for everything that they have. Honestly. <laughs> All right, so that finishes up our news segment. The next thing is new to the collection, and Jordan yes. brought something with him to show off. I did. I brought uh, Master Chief from Halo, which is not really anything new, but it's this one's new to me. Uh, this is from the Spartan collection from, I think, Wicked Cool Toys made it, but okay. they're owned by Jazzwares yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so they're, it's part of the Jazzwares line, the Spartan collection of six inch figures for Halo. Um, they rebranded everything and started re-releasing stuff for Halo Infinite, uh, like a little over a year ago. So I'm a little late getting into the line. Series four has just started hitting stores and this figure I believe is the series one version of Master Chief. Okay. Um, but I was able to sort of backpedal and get him and a few others I wanted to pick up, um, because I got lucky and found some of the harder to find figures at retail at Walmart. 
Um, so I went from trying to avoid buying into this line to going way more in than I expected to. And now I own like half of it. Um, I love that he has that chromed visor. That looks fantastic. He, so, so Halo has had a lot of toy lines over the years, which is why I was hesitant to buy into this. Yeah. Six inches, my, my sweet spot for scale. Okay. So like as soon as I saw these, I was like, Ooh, maybe. Um, so, uh, McFarland did the first, sorry, McFarland didn't do the first joyride studios did the first batch for Halo and Halo two. Uh, and then McFarland took over around Halo three and brought it back down from like those, the originals were like an eight inch scale. Okay. Then they did like a, like a five inch scale for the McFarland stuff, which was great, but the, pr- the quality control on it was awful and mm. they broke frequently. Uh, and you easily lost parts or they break or the joints would suck. It's just McFarland's halo product was very, very hit or miss. It was like all beautiful looking, but also very fragile. So most of it's broken by now. Okay. Um, and then eventually Mattel took over the license for a bit. Uh, and they put out some really good looking stuff that I skipped on entirely because I had been, I had already been like ruined by yeah. McFarlane at that point. Um, and by the time Mattel figured out what they were doing with it, they lost the license. Uh, and now Jazzwares is doing it. And honestly, this figure is fantastic. Uh, the, the big thing with this line is that it's got all the articulation I want from a Halo line. It's got all the weapons I wanted to come. Like Master Chief came with the the battle, the sorry, the assault rifle and the uh, pistol for the new Halo Infinite game. Okay. Um, I'm a big Halo guy, so like it's like one of the only video games I still consistently play. So it, it was great to me to get this really well articulated figure. Um, most of the line is really well made. There have been some QC issues I personally run into. Um, where one of my figures has an ankle joint that just got, uh, the joint is covered by plastic where Mm. like they, the mold came, I guess they, I don't know if it it particularly molded weird so much as mine just had a factory error Okay, where the plastic filled in over the joint. Oh. Um, so it's just solid at the ankle, but the ankle's at a weird angle so you can't move it, which Mm. is unfortunate. This one's not that one, but, uh. That's the only real QC issue I've run into, um, okay. that and some loose joints. But I do like um, a lot of these sort of pop apart pretty easily, oh, which okay. I don't I don't want to necessarily rip them apart uh, right now. But um, I know that like some of the other ones I've got, they like pop off at the edges and limbs so you could sort of mix and match them a little bit, Okay, which is a feature that was always fun on some of the other older Halo lines. But I just I really appreciate the amount of effort and love that Jazzwares is clearly pouring into making this line great. Because it's been a while since we've really had Halo product regularly on the shelves. And especially to get it in a six inch scale finally is just like really nice. Um, so as a fan of the line, uh, the figures look beautiful. They like they've already done two or three different versions of Master Chief based on his various appearances throughout the I think they've done like five five or six games in the main series now. Okay. I think the six Infinite is the sixth main storyline game. Okay. And they've had a few little spin-off ones. But uh I just really love Halo and I love that they've done this sort of perfect general version of master chief uh to really launch the line off so it was was one of those lines where if you're sleeping on it don't sleep too much longer it's definitely worth buying into uh i'm having a blast with the the figures i've picked up so far and i'm just like i said they're only on wave four right now so i think there's four figures in a wave so there's only like 16 figures out in total right now so it's really if you're thinking about buying yeah, it, now's, buy, the, time. now's the, the time. It's a really good jumping on point. Um, the first wave isn't that hard to get yet. Not, not hard to get still. There's still retail price for the most part. There's only a few that are expensive on the secondary. Okay. Um, which again is why I sort of bought into it. Cause I found those at the, at retail. So I was like, Oh man, I wasn't going to buy these. Yeah. But now I found the rare ones for $20 each. So I got to grab them. Uh, and now I'm just like in love with it because it's the articulation is really nice. Uh, I, it's just like you don't you can't really see it very close up, but it's got like the the sort of in and out on that. Oh, plus like the, the butterfly ball and the shoulder. It's got the shoulder butterfly plus the ball joint. It's got double elbows, double knees. Um, it's got the peg hole for the weapon on the back so you can actually like store oh, his cool. extra weapons. Um, and it looks like he's got, I haven't actually fiddled with it too much on this part, but the, this piece comes out so you could also store the weapon on the side on the leg like he does in the game. Oh, that's cool. Um, but then when you're not doing that, they actually let you fill that in. So it's not just a weird hole in his leg, which is something that none of the other versions of Halo have, uh, done for the toy lines. Um, and it comes with a bunch of alternative hands and mm-hmm. things like that. So you have the, uh, option to hold the weapons differently or like, you oh, know, that's depending on what you're doing. I know there's another version of chief that comes with the grappling hook, which is a huge part of the new halo game. Um, that like, is just mounted on his wrist all oh, the time, okay. which is really neat. Um, but just this one's a really sort of perfect version of 
Master Chief for Halo fans out there. And the the chrome on the visor, like you mentioned, is like just a really like the cherry on top. Yeah. To make it just a really fun, perfect figure. So our next segment is low budget. Sometimes we do a peg war, sometimes we do low budget. And I brought in another toy from the dollar store. Oh, jeez. And these are make it blocks. So these are not quite Lego minifigures. Mm-hmm. Uh, this pack is Wizards and Sorcerers. Okay. Or it might Wizards, be Spanish. Wizards sor- slash wizards. Sorcerers. And then we've got Monsters and Monsters. Monstrous? And monstrous. I, yeah, sure. We so got, I guess, in dual English language. And Spanish. Or French. Yeah. Either so, way. I don't think bl- Make It Blocks was the name brand, but these are very similar or maybe even identical body builds to minifigures the Dollar Store had five years ago. Yeah. Um, and I was get because I got some generic superheroes that had totally had a Hulk in it one time that I was like, <laughs> I have to buy this. Um, and they had... Um, uh, like Fast and Furious sets. I remember those. It, it was just so odd. Like, yeah, how like, is Fast and Furious not a big enough brand to actually get a deal with Lego? Yeah, it's just that so, they're working with these people. Well, yeah, it's just like one of those things where they're just sort of how far can we push this? You yeah. know. So I, when I saw these, I was like, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for minifigures. Yeah, and these guys look so goofy. Absolutely. So I want to check them out. So we got a mummy. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, I lost his legs already. We've got a mummy. It's fitting. The mummy's come apart. <laughs> we have a red orc with a giant mohawk. Okay. I kind of like him. Yeah, he's pretty sweet looking, actually. I'm digging that guy. Now, the, are the legs articulated, or are they just sort of stiff? They're pretty much like a like a Lego minifigure. It's just like a Lego, but not a Lego. Yeah. Um, they have swivels at the elbow, basically. Okay. Um, but other than that, they're pretty much like a Lego figure. They're not qu- uh, quite the same shape. Like, the heads are much more humanoid. Yeah. Uh, so this one's a purple Cyclops. Okay. It's kind of interesting. I've been noticing a lot more, like, Dungeons & dragons kind of stuff at the dollar store. Like, they sell the gaming dice now. Yeah, they do. And so I, th- that was one of the things kind of, when I saw these, I was like, oh, look, they're really kind of... Sticking it in there. Like these, the, would be, these would be a fun way to, like, include more miniatures in your game. If yes. you needed, like, generic monsters. So we've got, like, a... I mean, it's a skeleton, but he looks like an X-ray man, really. He's got okay. the green uh, glow. Light from Batman Beyond. <laughs> yes. Perfect description of that guy. <laughs> and then we've got uh, the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> man, that is exactly the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> she looks pretty good. I mean, she, yeah. it looks almost exactly like the wizard hat from Lego. Yeah. That's like like it's so close. It's like almost exactly that, and uh, I mean, I, there's a there's a question there somewhere of like how far did they like rip, rip it off? Or? It's interesting that she has feet that are articulated, but they don't move because, because of, of the skirt. The skirt, but mm-hmm. they did a skirt. Yeah. Oh, look at that! The skirt it fits off. over the legs. Yeah, so she has real legs, which I guess. I mean, did, did I, they they used to do that with Lego? Like the wizard had he had a robe, a robe that, that went over it, but now a lot legs. of times they just use like a triangular brick yeah. for like dresses and things. Yeah, yeah. No, Mini Mates does that with skirts too, where they okay. give you the full legs under the skirt, yeah. even though they aren't really being used. And then the wizards, which seems why is the witch and not in that set? <laughs> well, she's a monster, I guess. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I just feel like she really belongs in the wizard set. Well, this set, I'm gonna say has. A little bit of Harry Potter influence. Oh, these wizards. Okay. So, whoa, they have some like deranged smiles on these people, though. We gotta get close ups on that. We will. But uh, so we have this boy or girl. I'm not even sure. Yeah. Sure. Giant smile. Okay. But has like the Harry Potter glasses. Yeah. Uh. We have a a girl that might be like a. A wood nymph or something? I don't know. She's got sort of a green tunic going on there. Yeah. Uh, we have another witch. This one's a purple witch. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. It's just a different witch. A different witch. And that she has the most insane smile I've ever seen. <laughs> Are you sure she's not wearing a mask? Well, it could be. She could be, like, with the times. I mean, just because she's a witch doesn't mean her, make her a monster. That's true. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got, so this, these last two here, this is where I feel like it's Harry Potter-ish. 
They look like they're those wearing school uniforms. New ones look like Harry Potter. These are these other ones look like Harry Potters, but that one's not. Well, Harry- those, some of those did already, <laughs> but like these these two are definitely wearing like school uniforms. Oh wow, yeah, those are absolutely. What is his forehead? <laughs> <laughs> his he's got like a six head. <coughs> so I, you know, wizards and monsters. I wizards and monsters. Go get your dollar store of fun here. Uh. I, I don't know. I like stuff that comes from the dollar store, some of these goofy toys. I love dollar store stuff. I don't know if I would have bought these. <laughs> um, maybe the, the monsters one for the, the weird blight looking guy. Because uh, he's pretty cool. But uh, I don't think I would have bought the wizards with the six head. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> it's just, I can't. I'm just like, I can see it from here. I have a. It's just so weird looking. His face is so small. He looks like one of those. Um, maybe they misprinted the face too low. Maybe it's just like no, but like this girl's lips are almost off her for off her chin. Yes, <laughs> that's also really. Good. It's just like his face is so small. His nose is printed in his eye. So yeah, this face is just printed wrong. So they just misprinted. Like I can see the lump of his nose. Okay, what it's supposed to be his nose, and it's like literally like a weird tumor. Yeah, in one eye socket. I think I think that it, I think they were misprinted. But like I kind of like it better like this. It's just it's just really weird. So bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't. I'm gonna have nightmares about that one. We have a theme today for today's episode. We do. And uh, I don't. I can't. I feel like I'm forgetting what it is. So I, I didn't <laughs> even bring a peg warmer for this episode because this entire line just sat. Yeah. And then it got clearanced, and it's still sat. Yeah. And it sits at toy shows, although some parts are harder to find than others, and I don't even have the full line, and that seems hard to believe when you look at yeah. how much stuff well, is look, here. Yeah, no, I'm, like, looking around, and I feel like I'm surrounded by the whole line right now, so the I'm fact that you're saying you're missing pieces. stuff is insane to me. Yeah. Uh, so Land of the Lost was a 70s TV show that was very popular. You brought a vintage. I brought my inspired vintage inspired Slee Stack, stack Funko Pop because that's the only Slee Stack I could find that I had. And then in the '90s, uh, Sid and Marty Croft, as well as other producers that just didn't get the name recognition credit on the show, um, they decided to to redo it to bring it back for a new generation. Yes. And '90s it up. Yeah. So one thing I actually really, really do appreciate about this show, and it's something that I don't think it's going to ever get the credit for that it deserves. Okay. This might be the very first legacy sequel. Mm. It might be, because this is, it's set in the same world as the original Land of the Lost. Yes. It's meant to be taking place later than the original Land of the Lost. Right. But it's all new characters. It's not, you don't get any repeat characters so at all. There was, there, uh, from what I've read online, there were some plans to bring back characters, yes. um, but it just didn't work out. They couldn't cast the original people. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just sort of scrapped that idea. But it, so, it's a cool concept. So from what I had actually like looked, I looked into this a good bit because I wanted to make sure I wasn't the, the jackass who showed up and didn't know what I was talking about. Right, right. Um, and apparently they were going to have Holly Marshall, the, the daughter from the original yes. one, come back as an adult in this one and just still be in the land of the lost. Right. And, and there is a like jungle woman in this mm-hmm. series that they changed the character, but it was going to be rewrote, They rewrote yes. the Holly character as Krista, who's right. in the show. Uh, and they were going to have Chaka back, yes. who they rewrote as Stinky, right. um, which is a much better name than Chaka. Um, but like, generally speaking, they planned it as an actual legacy sequel, which was something that at the time hadn't been done. Like right. in the yeah. 90s, there weren't such a thing as, we're going to make a sequel, but like 20 years later. It doesn't, and we're going to have the same characters and it's going to be the same story and everything. And, um, it just it didn't happen. And like there, there's even talk of, it's not officially confirmed, but there's talk of, um, Scarface, the T-Rex yeah. is actually grumpy from the original series, but he got injured by the, uh, they called it the fly swatter, that mm. thing they used to get him out of the cave. Yeah. Uh, so like. It's supposed to be the same T-Rex, supposedly. So, like, it's one on... Technically, he's the only recurring legacy character, if even though it's unofficial. Right. Uh, so, it's, like, one of those things where, to me, that's just, like, really cool, because I love 
love when they do stuff like that in and, anything. And that was totally lost on all the kids in the 90s watching Oh, yeah, because we had no, no idea. idea that it was we another show. We had no show. idea. We, this was the only Land of the Lost we ever knew. Right. Because, like, I remember, I can tell you right now, I haven't watched this show since it was on. Okay. But when it was on, I watched it every day. I loved this show so much. It, I liked it a lot, and I, but I do remember kind of my issue with it. And I, I, I did rewatch four or five episodes recently preparing for this episode. And I immediately remembered what I remembered as a kid is that it's a lot of like boring scenes of kids doing chores and then an exciting special effects sequence with a dinosaur. Yeah. And then more boring chores or like going to look for some weird MacGuffin in the jungle. Sure. And then a cool dinosaur scene yeah um but the the like the stop motion dinosaurs mixed with puppets and things like that kept me interested yeah like it it, it, you know every time it would slow down boom there'd be something exciting happen and you know it 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 would keep you watching the channel even though it was like yeah they're just sort of standing around they're just gardening or like i don't know putting tin cans on a string as an alarm you know (laughs) sure i mean yeah but then you you had stinky running Mm -hmm. around and um I forget her name. The little, the dinosaur thing. Tasha. Tasha. The little girl dinosaur that ran around with the kids and Stinky. Because Stinky wasn't enough on his own. We needed a second animal sidekick who doesn't, does she speak? I can't remember. Just like noises. Yeah, Yeah, just noises. And Stinky also just does that. Stink has, he can say certain phrases and things. Like he'll say like high five or whatever. He 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 has a word here and there. He kind of mimics what other people say a little bit. Okay, so he's a toddler and she's a baby. And And she's a baby. There you go. So it's just like we had two fun animal sidekicks in the same show that hung out together. I always thought Stink was really creepy though. Like I mean, that, he is that really creepy. Face, like the big forehead. Yeah, that's real smooth. The whole species is really creepy. Yeah, um, he's the smooth head. He's just like <laughs> he is just a really weird looking little ape why, man. Why is his forehead bald? Because uh, it was just the just the so weird he doesn't ape, look like because he's like a Neanderthal. Yeah, so he doesn't look like Chewbacca because we don't want to get sued. <laughs> yeah. uh, is essentially why they look like that because that's what Chaka looked like. Yes, I mean it's that's just, really where just, the design came from. Realistically, it's just a smaller Chaka. Yes, um, and like I, I just remember I loved this show because I was already super into dinosaurs. And yes, anything with dinosaurs was immediately on my radar when mm-hmm. I was a kid. So Land of the Lost became like it's it's afternoon Land of the Lost time. It's on. We got to watch it. And I remember it drove my parents nuts because the show was not good. It's not good. Um, I brought the lyrics to the theme song because they do such a good job of summing up everything you need to know before you watch the show. Yeah, yeah. So our vacation began mapping out a plan. But the map never showed the danger down the road. We felt the camper shaking as the earth was quaking. There's nowhere to hide. It's the ride of our lives. Now we've crossed the line and fallen through time, living in the land of the lost. Yep. What a world we found deep underground, living in the land of the lost. (laughs) The world is strange and new. See the triple moons. But don't turn your back or you'll become a snack. Because some Tyrannosaurus could be hungry for us. We'll need to make some friends. The wonders never end. Now we've crossed the line, fallen through time, living in the land of the lost. My favorite line, we opened the door and found dinosaurs living in the land of the lost. Living in the land of the lost. Land of the lost. I, I mean, some it, snaps. It's like you've some, got it. It like, sounds like deaf poetry. It when does you say it like that. Absolutely. And but, you know, I'm there. Boom. You've watched that sequence. You know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you get it's. Like, they didn't even need to do an origin episode. They could just, sh- that's it. That's it, right there. That's it. That's all you need. We got it. Okay. You got the whole premise. I, I just, I remember loving this show so much. And, like, I'm afraid to revisit it because I feel like I know I'm, it's going to ruin it for me. And I know I bring this up often. Uh, but, like, don't rewatch Street Sharks. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to hold up. It's not good. Um, in your head, it's the coolest thing that ever happened. I, I think this show for me was exactly how I remembered it. Really? Yeah. So I was oddly um, aware of how they did like special effects. I was really into stop motion animation as a yeah. kid. So I enjoyed watching the fact that it would switch from like a stop motion to a puppet. scene to a puppet close up and things like that. So watching it again, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, man, I almost enjoy the creativity that the the videographer, the filmographers and all those people, the director used to try to like make you believe the things really there. Cause it's a lot of like shots of a puppet and then reaction shots. Yeah. But the reactions are never strong enough. 
the dad is never scared enough of any of the dinosaurs. <laughs> and I guess they don't want to scare the kids by having this really expressive, like, terror on the humans' faces. Yeah. But it's like, it's a friggin' T-Rex. And you're just like, oh, no. It's just hard because it's, it's a show made for kids. For sure. So it's like, I don't think they want to scare the kids watching too badly no. by, by doing that. So it's, I understand the idea of keeping things light. Yes. And fun um, and not too intense. But also, it's like you said, it's. But your main bad guy is a T Rex. Your main bad guy is a T Rex, and your other main bad guy is a lizard person. Who, by the way, even though it's a legacy sequel, it is never once explained why the Slee Stacks look so drastically different now. No, it's Because they look like this, and they're less cute and, you know, much taller and terrifying. But, like, they look like these weird green googly eyed things, which is, like, actually why Funko Pop's, like, a perfect thing to be it. So it's. Because it doesn't really look drastically different than a Funko Pop would be, right? Um, but the the li- the they're the much more sacks now, reptilian. They're much more reptilian. They wear clothes now. Yes. Um, other than the one guy who would wear like a loincloth sometimes, like the orange one. Uh, but uh, Enoch, thank you. I, like blank so, moment. So, so in the the '90s show, mm-hmm. they explain that there's like this whole Slee stack civilization underground. Mm-hmm. But the only ones we get to see are these three criminals you know, at least in season one, that, that have been banished. Yes. And so we just keep seeing the same three Slee Stacks, which seems odd. Yeah. You know, that we wouldn't run into this other... Like, there's no other... Nobody else is around. Right. And it's just they're just... I mean, you're already living underground. If they're if they're around, they I feel like you'd run into them at some point. You would, you would think. And they go into a lot of caves. I mean, I mean they, they're living they in the land f- of the lost. Right. They <laughs> fell through... They crossed the line and fell through time, so they didn't see anything when they drove around underground. They didn't find this this people maybe in a future season if this had gone more than two seasons they would have what drives me the most nuts about the fact that we only see three of the slee stacks in the show is that only two of them got action figures in the toy line and we're still we're never getting the third slee stack he's just and it's just i as one of those people where even if i don't own this line just as a completist as someone who likes to have a full set right it it would drive like i could never buy into this toy line because (laughs) it would drive me nuts not having the third guy I, w- I wonder if there's some diehard Land of Lost guy that's, like, customized. I'm sure, like, if we scour one. Instagram, somebody out somebody there has, like, a scu- home sculpted mold yeah. of, like, the they made the Sleaze Stack and whatever other characters never got made in the line. And uh, they've made, uh, what's it, companion pieces based on the original series that all fit the same articulation and for some reason do karate, <laughs> uh, much like these. <laughs> so this line was made by Tiger Toys, and Tiger... <laughs> Electronics, yes. you know, like another division, is so well known for their 90s handheld games. Which are back right now. Actually. Yes. Oddly enough, people are back into that. Which is weird because, like, there's better games on your phone already. Like, yeah. Like, there's nothing but nostalgia powering those things selling. And honestly, I don't think they are selling, but they, uh, they're out there. I still I see them at the store. People must like, be buying them because they're not always there. <laughs> Yeah, so so they they got into toys, and I can only actually think of three toy lines. There may be something that I'm missing, but they did Land of the Lost, okay, Captain Planet, yep, and Inspector Gadget. I am all right around the same time. Yeah, it was like a really brief window, and then they were like, no more. (laughs) And and Tiger was like a was owned by Hasbro at the time. So it's not like they needed Tiger to be making action figures. Yeah. You know, like they could just keep them in the electronics field. They were famous for doing stuff like the talk boy from home alone. Yeah. You know, they did, um, hit clips, which was like little, that was much later, but yeah, kind of like, yeah, much later, but like little, almost like a cassette, but it was, but a little, little a MP3. It was a keychain music player. Yeah, God, I and forgot about those. You would collect the, the songs, the little singles. Little I mean, keychains of like your little CDs, your music singles on yeah. on a little string on your keys. And uh, nobody who actually had keys to anything would actually have them. But, you know, uh, it, it was just one song. For tweens on their backpacks. For tweens on their backpacks. Yeah. They had like one song that could play in your yeah. little headphones off of this tiny little media player. I forgot about hit clips. <laughs> So they went down the road with I'm these. I'm like going through like a weird. <laughs> yeah, brought back a blast from the past there. Yeah, it was just like a like a flat, like a nom flashback or something for hit clips. <laughs> it's just like in my head, I just am picturing like the little, little purple player with Smash Mouth in it for some reason. And it's just. <sighs> so Land of the Lost got this 
pretty big action figure line, really. Yeah, it did. They got a board game. They did get a Tiger electronic video game. Yeah, it did. But then an odd thing, um, Just Toys, who makes Bendoms, made Bendy figures of some of these characters. They did. Like... Like, was it that big? It only lasted 26 episodes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it must have done well in the ratings to warrant, or just everyone thought it was going to be a hit because they really did double down on merchandise for this. They really did. They, we got, what, two play sets? Two plus play sets, like, uh, a big vehicle and a bunch of small vehicle, vehicle play sets. I mean, it's a decent, I mean, it, it took up some shelf space when this thing was all displayed in a store. Like the planet Yeah, and it continued to take big. up some shelf space for quite some time. It ate up some shelf space for a while there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's weird because like the toys aren't, sorry, the play sets aren't bad. The figures have, I, it's, it, even as a kid, it always put me off when an action figure had an action feature. Um, like uh, this guy here, I can see has like a cool button I can press. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the purpose of that? Like, what am I gonna? I'm just gonna walk in and just be like, here you, here you go, and just kick take, somebody. Take out this. It's not even like a real kick. It's like a like he lifts up his leg to fart. <laughs> he's just like, let me just. And it's just I don't see the purpose of that. And he's smiling like he did a fart. So it's like, that's all I can think of when I look at this guy now. Is that that's what he does? He just lifts his leg and lets one rip. And it's that's not a good action feature. Like somebody. Set, sat down and let that get through approvals and production and like it went through it went through all the, the whole process and got released as a figure that just sort of lifts his leg way to the side like if it went forward to do a kick sure I get that but to lift it like straight horizontal is just a really odd choice well I I do have the card art here because I for some reason have oh, three Kevin with karate kick action right and it's you know he's doing a sidekick I guess I mean, it's it's way out there to the side. It's really out there. It just boggles my mind that that got through approvals and production. That somebody was like, "Yeah, just let him kick way to the left or <laughs> sorry, to the right." Sorry. They. Uh, it's, I feel like some of them look more like the characters than others. True. I think the dad should have had his hat on. Yeah. Because in most scenes, he wore a hat, a baseball hat. He wore a blue hat. I think probably to help with stunt doubles. Yeah. You that know, because that's like a typical 80s, 90s thing, like the kids in E.T. wear hoods, so you don't realize it's a, you know, 40-year-old on a bike, Yeah, you know, doing the bike bicycle scene for, or an adult, 30-year-old doing the bicycle yeah. scene for the 12-year-olds. Um, but, like, the dad figure doesn't really look at all like Tom Porter, I don't no, think. No, he doesn't. Kevin mm. is okay. I, in fact, his shirt is probably the most recognizable thing. He does actually wear that galaxy shirt in one of the episodes. So that's some nice attention detail. Yeah. I like that the dad does like a celebratory air punch. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're that's going like, home. It's either that because like the way his arm is sculpted one, this arm is shorter than this arm, which is mm. weird because uh, it's the one with the action feature. But uh, when he does it, he's either punching like way up like a celebratory air punch or if you have his arm further down, he's doing like a really gut punch, like a hard like screw you gut punch like. That's how you take like out you the sucker punch stacks. somebody, and it's like there's no in between. It's either it's like a gut punch, and then like a yeah, and that's it's not a fair fight. <laughs> so I found a list online. It's supposedly the full line of the toys. I'm not a hundred percent sure this is accurate. I'm going to talk about a few things as we go through it, mm -hmm. and then uh, there's also a few toys that got advertised that didn't get released. Uh, so I hate that. We have the dad, Tom Porter. Yes. We have Kevin, mm -hmm. as well as a talking Kevin. Okay. And the talking figures are here behind Jordan. And they basically are sort of repaints. Some of them are retools. I don't think Kevin has his kicking action anymore. Mm -hmm. But he has just a, a, a backpack that says a few phrases, which See, was popular in the 90s for some reason. I actually like the talking versions better because it looks like the figures don't talk. Their backpacks talk. Mm. So they lost their action feature. They're just the generic, basic versions of the characters, and if you want to take off the backpack, you can. You can. So, like, to me, those are, like, the premier versions to have, realistically, because I don't have to worry about somebody doing, like, a weird sidekick fart. That's and, true. Uh, or, like, a gut punch. I, I do like, feel like they rip you off, though, by not packing in the accessories they've already tooled. Yes. Because Kevin here has his headphones and his video camera and his boom box, which See, were yeah. all things he used a lot in the show, despite the fact that batteries were pretty hard to come by. Uh, yeah. Uh, but those were actually, like, things he used in the show on an episode-by-episode -episode basis. Yeah. 
And so to not repackage those is a little disappointing. I mean, yeah, that's how they get you to buy both. For sure. Absolutely. Because if you looked at both on the shelf, you'd be like, oh, I want these, but I also want the talking one. Yeah. And then did every and then a couple of them have they at least have different colored clothes yes. too. So like they made you they give so you more for, bang for your buck. For a character like Stink, they couldn't really do much. And even Krista, she is repainted, but yeah, she doesn't really like change her clothes in the show. Outfit. Mm. But the kids all did wear different outfits. You know, they they rewore. Like, take her down. Yeah, for go for it. And talk about how weird and thick her chin is. Like her neck and chin are just like a log. It's really weird how much of a neck this woman has. <laughs> It's just like a like a log of meat, and uh, her the back of her neck and chin are just like taking up way too much real real estate here. It's just it's a lot. We're Sorry, in it's that a lot to process. we're in that <laughs> era though where like '90s female toys were not good looking. That's fair. No, I you know what I give it a pass for that uh, you know? because of that because '90s female toys the '90s were not kind to female characters when it came to toy lines, um, because they would frequently either just not make them or yes. they give them weird blocky bodies or awkward shaped necks and heads yeah. because they couldn't figure out how to sculpt a slender person for some reason. So we have the sister Annie and a talking version of her. Mm -hmm. We have Krista, the jungle girl and the talking version of her stink got two versions talking yeah. and non-talking. Is this the non-talking? That is actually the talking version there. Okay. The, the non-talking one had articulated knees. Oh, that's a choice. So he got kind of, you he know, downgrade. downgrade. Yeah, see that sucks. Like, I mean, Stink. What? What does he have an action feature, or does he? I think he just he came has with... running action. Running which action, which is why he they had, had to probably had to knees. drop it. Yeah, they probably yeah. There you they go. They probably had articulated knees so he could run. <laughs> Sorry, I just I'm trying to. <laughs> but like, honestly, this is the this talking one is um he's not bad looking for it's what he bad. is, and like he's he's pretty solid. I mean, it's got the standard five poa. Uh, for like '90s figures, right. he's fun. I kind of like him. They did Tasha, the the little dinosaur. She has a wind up walking action as Oof. well as a boulder throwing action. So oh double action double feature, awful action feature. Yes. Uh, they made Shung, who's the main bad guy. He, yep. There's actually a loose one over there. Oh, he has a an action feature where he kind of raises his arm because he should have his like crystal dagger with him. Yes, which was important in the show. Mm -hmm. We had um they. The website I found this list on says there's a talking Shung, but I have never seen one, and I could find none online. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he was possibly planned Cancel. and just didn't come out. Maybe mentioned on the back of a package somewhere. Yeah. They made Nim, but no Keeg of the, the other Slee Stacks. Yeah. There was a Dinosaur 2-pack, mm -hmm. and I don't own that one, but I've looked at pictures of it online, and it's not super clear. I mean, you know, you're looking at these pictures that probably have been on the internet since the late 90s yep. when this stuff was still on clearance. Sure. and uh, But it looks almost exactly, I'm 100% I'm sure, they reused this Definitely Dinosaur and possibly this one for the two-pack. The, the picture, I can't quite see the head to see if it has the horn, but it's really odd that these would get reused from a late 80s toy line into this. Yeah. I did not take the time to find out who made Definitely Dinosaurs. If that was a Hasbro or a Kenner or something like that that is in that wheelhouse, then, yeah, they just share molds a lot, around a lot yeah, sometimes. Yeah, no, they definitely did. But these also don't really fit the aesthetic of these other characters. These are very friendly-looking dinosaurs and very goofy. I mean, Land of the Lost is a very goofy-looking it, it prospect. Is. So it's, I get the logic of that. But, uh, then, but then you have, like, the big mean-looking pterodactyl. Right. So, the, Don, so there's the, the pterodactyl glider, oh, it was pterodactyl. which I have loose and uh, sealed. And apparently Annie can just soar through the air on that. It really flies. Yeah, it, it actually kind of glides. Wow. <laughs> so I actually, the loose one I bought as a, a kid, probably a few years after this show was out of... Yeah. You know, circulation at a yard sale and didn't remember that it was a Land of Lost toy. It was just like, <laughs> oh, that's a weird, like, this is neat. dinosaur glider. You know, like, uh, He-Man had Turbodactyl, which you kind of ride like a glider, but it didn't sure. fly. You know, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I've had that for years. And then when I ended up buying a chunk of this collection, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have that thing already. I know where that is. Let me go <laughs> dig it out. <laughs> Uh, there's the Boulder Bomber, which looks like it could just be an Ewok toy. Yeah. Or a, a Robin Hood Prince of Thieves toy. 
Which were the same toys. Which were the same toys. Yep. Uh, so that really could be, you know, sought after by other collectors. It's great sure. for your Star Wars dioramas. Yeah. We have the SS Frisco, which is a little tiny boat that's on the far side there. I'm not sure if that's a nod to the fact that in the original Land of the Lost, they were, like, rafting. Maybe. I mean, that boat didn't have a sail on it. Yeah, that's that makes sense. And I don't know if they used that in the show or not. I can't remember if there was an episode where they went sailing. Yeah, I don't... But uh, it's possible. I mean, I didn't rewatch all I like the episodes. specificity that they've killed a pterodactyl to make the sail. Because it just says, oh. uh, removable pterodactyl sail. So mm. the sail in the sailboat is flesh of a pterodactyl. Wow. Which is kind of graphic. I mean, really. maybe they found a dead one. I mean, maybe, but that's like a, that's still, that's still kind of graphic that it's yeah. like, you know what? Let's, let's rip this thing's wing off and make a sail out of it. Like <laughs> that's, that's a choice that was made that to, yeah, to yeah. label it that they could have just said it was a sheet or anything else that they found. Or right. With right. Them. They had like, a lot of supplies cause they yeah. were camping. Yeah. Yeah. They could have been like the camping tent if yeah. they moved into the, the shelter, but no, it's a pterodactyl wing that they've ripped off and repurposed. There's the Landmaster. Which they always just kind of refer to as a truck in the show, and obviously they didn't want to like call it whatever it is. That is it yeah. a Jeep Cherokee? Is it a like I don't know I mean, which vehicle? I'm not a vehicle expert here. I'm looking at it. Land and Rover. It, it, it's like one of the few times a toy line has given us a station wagon. Yeah, because it's not. It, it's like kind of an SUV, but it's almost more of a station wagon. Looking at it, like it's lower to the ground, kind of like an Explorer. Um, and as someone who's got the several of the Jurassic Park uh, jungle explorers floating around, yeah, that's definitely more of a like a low level <laughs> station wagon. I think it like has this, it has a little Ecto one kind of feel to it to it me, does. where where they're like, how can we make this thing more toyetic? And so we're gonna give it a net launcher, <laughs> and we're gonna give it sound effects. the The buttons for the sounds are on the hood. I see that. If there's anything that's gonna break up a sculpt and make a toy look ugly, is putting the sound buttons right on the hood Just of the put car. Put them on the top, on the roof at that point. In the roof rack or on the side somewhere, like a little more hidden, maybe. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. But like, I do appreciate that it's. A station wagon. I just, I don't know why. I mean, it's, it's important in the show. Like, yeah. they use the truck yeah. or talk about the truck or whatever. It's in the opening sequence of every episode. Yeah. So I get making it. And yeah. and kids like having Vehicles. the signature vehicle of a toy line. I for just sure. appreciate that, like, for all of the, the toys and lines that have been made over the years, very few have given us a station wagon. Yes. And it's, I mean, yeah, you get Jeeps and you get SUVs and you get big trucks and stuff. But, like, this is like a low to the ground, like, if this was a different color, it would be the car I grew up with, uh, which is just a, a GMC station wagon. My other personal pet peeve, besides the buttons, mm -hmm. and this happens in kid toy lines a lot, but drove me crazy as a kid. It comes with Land of the Lost logo decals to put on the door. Ah. Not screen accurate, people. And that bugged me as a kid. Yeah, no. I mean, why would you just don't put them on? Well, that's what I would have done. Like, yeah. my 89 Batmobile does not have the Bat logo stickers on the side of it because as a kid i was like they don't go on there he doesn't have that on there yeah but it's just such a weird like inclusion they want to slap the branding on you it gotta have the branding and and sometimes it might even be part of like licensing like that car company may have said like you've got to put land on the uh, land of the lost so that way it doesn't because we've already licensed it to somebody else for die cast or yeah, something yeah, yeah. weird like that it could you even be a make workaround sure it's specifically branded land yeah of the lost but I do really appreciate the the fact that again they, they made two playsets, two playsets, and they're pretty impressive. So they are. We have the Porter's Treehouse over here, which it's on stilts. Yep. So it's actually a treehouse. Yeah. Um. Well, it's, it's made of trees. Yes, but I mean, tall, like, like it's not just a a base on the ground. It it is yeah. actually like an elevated thing because you. You want to play out the stories of the show, and the, mm -hmm. the idea is that they're safe from the dinosaur by being elevated. Yeah. And, you know, so that that's a fun feature to it. It's definitely action-packed as far as it drops logs. It's oh, got a, a winched-up ladder, <laughs> uh, built-in log-rolling booby trap, electronic trip wire with alarm sounds, which, again, it's Tiger Toys. They want the electronic stuff. But their alarm in the show was din cans on a string, <gasps> not an electronic alarm. It's got a unless little... The, unless the electronic alarm sounds like ting hands on a string. <laughs> that would be great if it was like a really bad just recording. Just like a really that, crappy, like, just like... Ting, 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 ting. ting, ting, ting. 
<laughs> now I want to open it up and put batteries in it. Find yeah, out. yeah. We gotta. <laughs> I just imagine it having the same like alarm sound as the Jurassic Park compound, you know? Oh, like, yeah. I've got know. I've got that. That's <laughs> of all my childhood play sets, that's what that's the one that's still up on display yeah. in the it's just in the house. It's in the it's in my attic right now. Uh I've got the whole it's I, I, I very much intermingle my Jurassic Park stuff. So I've got like the whole setup with the command compound and the fence with all the modern versions yeah, of the okay. dinosaurs. So I've got the giant, ridiculously tall Brachiosaurus like right next to it. <laughs> making um, the fence look really making short. Making the fence look really short and making it's like as tall as the friggin' building. Yeah. So it's just like it's such a nice piece still. Like it looks like the command center. Yeah, it yeah. looks like the visitor center from the movie. And it's I just love Jurassic Park. So like of course I love Land of the Lost because of that. So conceptually, even though I haven't watched this show in a long time, I have a lot of weird nostalgia for it. I also I just really appreciate this the art on the sides of this thing. And it's, like I'm sure it's on the front too. Yeah. It's very comic booky. It's very comic booky. The dad looks super buff for some reason. Not as dopey as the figure. Not nearly as dopey as the figure. None of these characters. The only one who looks like the figure is the girl, and I guess uh, Tasha. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe Stinky, but Stinky even looks bigger in the, in this packaging uh, than he is. So it's weird. But the dad looks like really intense. Like I'd watch that show, <laughs> but. <laughs> He actually kind of has an appropriate reaction on that face compared to mm-hmm. in the show where he's always like, oh, T-Rex. He's like, oh, T-Rex. And he's doing like a weird karate chop at he's, nothing. He's and getting ready. He's getting ready. Do you Now, is there like a mallet? Is that what this thing is? Do you see on the picture? I do that see. Almost like the dad's going to chop this. That is a mallet, yeah. So maybe he's karate chopping that to, to trigger it. To trigger what? The, the mallet to fall. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's going to smack the mallet. And, and the then mallet it'll hit It'll hit Scarface. Down. Yeah, that makes more sense than anything else. Yeah, okay. I believe that. It's handy that they have an electronic alarm, but the girl is like, Hey, Dad, there's a dinosaur down here. <laughs> That's a really valid point also. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a... It's like... I'm just more surprised than anything else that this playset wasn't recycled time and time again. Yeah. Especially since Hasbro owned Tiger at the time. Right. Like, Hasbro is, like, notorious for recycling stuff. I guess they and just didn't have another line that called for a treehouse. I'm just saying, even now, it's been, t- like, 20 plus years. Yeah. How has this not been? It's, like, such a f- full... Just like I'm just looking at it. It's just such so much stuff went into making this playset into a solid piece. And it's just really impressive, and it's just disappointing that it's not been reused for something else, I guess. Because there's so much stuff that could get away with using this. So, Shung's Lair, I feel like, could have been reused as, like, a Xena Hercules Absolutely. playset. It looks like all of the, like, buildings they go into in that show. It looks like the most generic villain dungeon yes. where ancient ruins thing. But I love that every single thing in that playset is in the first appearance of the Slee Stacks on the show. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, all of it. So yeah. the cage for Tasha, the the crystals in a in an urn or whatever you call it, the pot with the bones, the throne for, for Shung. I mean, all of it is straight out of the show, so it's very episode-specific. Like, the whole show is just like, the whole toy line is just like the first episode of the show. It's all they gave them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I just, it's... It's such a really cool layer because like Shung doesn't look that villainous. Like I can't imagine anybody looking that villainous uh, and being that intensely scary. It's hard to be scary in a rubber mask. Yeah, where they I can't remember because it's been so long. Is he at least animatronic in the face or anything? So it's very like Goldar from Power Rangers. Like there's a little lip flap, but not much. Gotcha. And most of the time, it doesn't even really seem like there's they're trying to lip sync. Like sometimes there's like. The bad guys will just sort of be shown from like the 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 goofy two, the the henchmen yeah. will be just sort of be shown from the background, so you they don't even have to try to make it look like <sighs> the mouths are being, moved. Yeah. you know, like they'll be kind of like making wisecracks as they walk away from the camera, sort of. Yeah, um, <laughs> and the, the voices are very uh, almost echoey, you know, like there's there's like a weird tone to them, like a supernatural kind of tone, yeah, which also seems to not match the fact that the, the the mouth wasn't moving at all in another yeah. weird way. It's just also, it's also just weird to me. I just, like, I can't get past how drastically different the Slee Stack look. Yeah. Uh, in the, the modern, the modern 90s <laughs> series. The 90s series almost makes you think that they're like an evolution of the dinosaurs. Yeah. Whereas the Slee Stacks from 
the seventies don't. They yeah, seem like they a whole other like aliens or yeah. something, or like some other weird evolution. Yeah, um, but like the sleaze acts from the nineties one do feel like just dinosaur people, especially because you had Tasha. Who is an already a walking upright dinosaur? Yeah, and then you have the sleep stack. Like it just like, is seems she supposed like, to be a, like a, a spin off sleep stack. She, no, she she's a baby a of whatever kind of dinosaur she is. But for whatever reason, she walks. <laughs> sure, and I mean, she gibberishes and, and gibberishes. Yeah, and there's no more of her species anywhere that anyone finds. Well, so Scarface kills her mom and eats the other eggs in like the first episode or Jesus. or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and they they find the one and they bring it back to the house. You know, sure. That's what you do with a big egg. I'm kind of surprised the action feature for her wasn't to hatch it out of the egg, since that's very episode specific. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. Uh, and she's just, I like that of all the people that are there, she's operating the crank uh, yeah. for the, the for ladder the over here. I'm sure she's very, you know, capable of doing yeah, that. Yeah, she's got thumbs, and she's like, you know, f- totally for the person to be like, let me just winch the ladder up, hold on. I'll save you, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> And then the last big piece, which I don't have, is Scarface. Mm, and that's like a big key piece. It is a key piece. I, and it's it it's kind of like, I, it kind of kicks my butt a little bit when I think about this collection. Like, I, you know, how can you how can you have the Land of Lost collection and not have it? But I've never seen him in person. It's not only that you don't have, you have like multiples of some I of I do. Stuff. I have like multiples of some of the figures. And you've got everything like new in box. Yeah. And it's all like beautifully packaged and pristine looking. Uh, and then you just missed Scarface. I don't have Scarface. And he is terrible if you've seen him. Like if you look up pictures of him. Yeah. It's like such a dopey looking dinosaur for it being the main bad guy. Yeah. Like his, his mouth is sort of just like teeth with black behind it. Like it's not a hollow mouth you could put something into. Do you know what I mean? And he has like light up eyes and a battery feature where he just kind of (laughs) goes. It's so bad for like, no, I want one. So like, cause it sounds really awful. I would buy one if I ever saw one for sure. Yeah. I mean, I I would have to, I have the, yeah, it seems, it seems like kind of silly that you wouldn't, if you'd found one. Yeah. I'm going to find one just so you can, I can make you buy it from me. (laughs) <laughs> we'll I mean, do Land of the Lost a, Part 2 I'll get a King's Ransom for it <laughs> There's also a commercial On YouTube I've found That mm-hmm. sh- is for Land of the Lost The, the commercials are actually kind of fun it's, I mean it's, 90's toy commercials were like a gold yes. b- That's an episode It's when they would build these cool little forts And uh, you know these little playset kind of things Yeah, uh, they're, they're great But so there's, there is one that, that features A repaint of Shung Which I assume is probably That talking Shung that was advertised or however it got on this checklist that's on the internet. Sure. There's a repaint of Kevin who has camouflage pants. Oh, snap. I don't know if he has the karate feature or some other feature on that toy. And then there's a a creature, a rancor type creature called the cyborg that was in two episodes of the show, mm-hmm. which would have been a cool toy. Uh, and it actually looks like a fun toy. Like, it can eat guys. Oh, snap. Um, it can, I think it has a missile that it shoots off its wrist. That sounds like the coolest toy in, yeah, that would have been in the line. But n- none of those three that I can find any like existence of. So I think that those three were going to be in the next wave, and it just didn't come out. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Somebody Some, somewhere somebody has, has production. Somebody that worked at Tyco, yeah, or at uh, Tiger. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they're out there somewhere. And now we're going to make it our mission to find them. This is going to be like a special. If you have <laughs> these, reach out. We, yeah, yeah. We need to talk about them. We need to talk show. about them. And uh, we need to see them and touch on them and stuff. <laughs> that's so that's generally an, what another we need to do. odd fact. Tasha mm-hmm. was played by Ed Gale, who is Chucky, and that's also Howard the Duck when he's like running around. Yeah, that makes sense. So he's like a a well known suit actor. Sure. And so he did like major motion pictures, and then got on like an ABC Saturday morning kids show and probably <laughs> sweated his butt off in a dinosaur suit in the in california yeah that sounds that's a that's a sad step down in your career <laughs> <laughs> but i mean he's a suit actor so like that's, a suit actor right you know what else i mean they? when the movies that you've done are include howard the duck howard the it's right. not exactly I mean, like true. you've got a shining resume that's true but i mean that's at least a big budget movie yeah i mean i guess land of the lost was probably a pretty expensive show to produce yeah even though it's not that high quality yeah i mean it's like at the time it was probably a pretty big deal that they're bringing back the loss because like 
as much as it's like a niche now, it's like very much like back in the day, Land of the Lost was like a big property. Yeah, and I mean, it, was, it did really well in syndication. Yeah, yeah. It's, so. it, that's what gave the show the green light to begin with to come right. back, is that the people really liked the old episodes still. And it was popular enough to get a Will Ferrell movie you know like we we try not to talk about the will ferrell movie like as much as i'm sitting here like oh i haven't watched this show in forever like man i i have watched the will ferrell movie and uh it's just interesting that land of the lost keeps that cultural you know it's got a it's it's very versatile just a, a little grasp on on pop culture there i feel like it's a very versatile brand that could very easily make a big comeback especially in the days of like streaming and stuff yeah this is exactly the kind of mid-budget series that could come back huge on like netflix or hulu out of nowhere yeah because especially now they could just do everything with i mean i'm sure they would use a lot of cg it would all be cg it would all be cg but like you look at a show like they did um god at this point it's been 15 years they did uh uh, primeval i think okay uh, it was like Doctor Who for the BBC, but it was like the dinosaurs version. Okay, so it was yeah. just, it was just like a bunch of dinosaurs came out of a portal, and we gotta go stop them. Uh, I haven't watched it. I'm sorry if I'm all wrong about this. <laughs> I did. I just saw the commercials a lot, uh, and it's on my radar because it's a dinosaur show. But it's one of those things where it's like I can see them dumping this out on Netflix as like a new Land of the Lost. And it's just conceptually we're gonna take the general concept and do a whole new thing with it, or they're gonna. <laughs> I'd like to see them do. Uh, the lost in space treatment where they take oh, it like yeah. way too seriously. Like, Oh, it's the land of the lost. And now we're, we're here and there's dinosaurs and things are terrible and everything's grim dark because we needed it to be grim dark. Uh, and it's just, I can't imagine this working that way, but you know, I also didn't think lost in space would work that way. And it really and did. It, did. it really did. Lost in space on Netflix is fantastic. It's so interesting though, to take like a, a lighthearted serial show like that. It's like, when are we getting the grim, dark Gilligan's Island? Yeah, it's like you got to figure that uh, Lost in Space was like super camp. Oh yeah, and then they did what they did to it, and it's it was fantastic. Yeah. So like, can they do that to Gilligan's Island? Would Land of the I feel like Land of the Lost would be perfect for that kind of treatment, where you just dump people in and it's like we're just lost in time now, and yeah, we've got to figure out how to get home, and there's dinosaurs and these weird lizard people and a monkey guy who hangs out with us and speaks gibberish. Um, and it's just, I, I think that would be a really fun idea for a new show. I'm going to get on the phone with Netflix. Yeah. I and uh, I'll get a job. <laughs> maybe they can reuse the molds of some of I mean, these I toys kn- for that. I know people there. So I, <laughs> I know people who know people who may be producers in Netflix. So it's like- <laughs> So I have carded versions of most of the figures yes i have loose versions of a few of the figures and i have doubles of a bunch of the carded figures yeah so i think i want to open a few of these up so okay. to actually Let's see them open these i'm bad thinking boys. like kevin maybe not so much i mean he, i do would li- i would like to take his accessories out but he we have him we've seen his yeah his fart we've kick. seen kevin's fart kick so let's see what else we got here uh okay so here's shung which i have one but he doesn't have his accessories so let's mm-hmm. check him out Oh, also, his playset has a, like, voice action feature. That's like cool. Like Snake Mountain. You know, the, the so classic. You, like, shout into it? Oh, it's actually got, like, a little CB radio on it. So, you, yeah, I mean, it's, a, you know, one of these battery features, because, again, it's Tiger Electronics. Yeah. But I, I, I love that feature because he has, like, this great menacing kind of a echoey voice. It makes and sense. And to, to give kids the ability to, to replicate that is pretty fun. Yeah, I always loved stuff like that when I was a kid. All right, so I'm slicing this package open. I have this weird thing about saving card backs, so I'm cutting the bubble off. Sure. I'm I'm one of those kids who like always rip, just like tore everything clean off. I, I did messily as I possible. I did as a kid, but then so because I always wanted to save the GI Joe file cards, I got in the habit of like being disappointed if it would rip all the art off of it because then the cards were like not full integrity they get kind of weird yeah so now that i'm an adult and i'm allowed to play with knives i <laughs> like to use a knife all right so i finally have now Shung's- i'm an adult and i use my knife to open toys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shung comes with his uh crystal sword yeah which he often would use it had like sort of undescribed powers where he would like aim it at somebody and they would like fall to their knees like sure you know just sort a of like a hum. powerful sword yeah and he also comes with another club that he can't really hold at all i mean he could hold it in that hand if you don't want him to have his dagger yeah uh so you know just value added i guess that he has this club and it's not keeg's 
club, which would be great because then you could use it maybe in your custom Keeg, Keeg figure. <laughs> Which All I right. know somebody made. Let me let me get this. Guy. All right, so there you gotta check out Strong. The club. There you yeah. go. His extra club. God, he's goofy looking. <laughs> yeah, he really can't hold this thing. I mean, kind of. No, no. The slide in there. It's sort of like you need to just. Oh, in the other hand. Yeah, yeah I was no. trying to like see if I could just like we- weasel it in there. And the the playset comes with like a weapon rack with a bunch of extra weapons. I wonder if that's just one of those. They like tooled it up and like, yeah, yeah we'll throw like it in. You can't even here. hold this one standing up because it's longer than him. <laughs> I just like that, uh, you know, he can just like. Beat up Tom Porter. Yeah. Back. It works. Perfect. Give him the stick. <laughs> if t- he knows he's got to use the long range yeah. weapon or Tom will get in there and <laughs> gut punch him. Yeah. So what is, he has like a. Like a hollow piece here. Yeah, I, let me is, see if this he's is. like very hollow. He's got another hole in the back. Um, hold the figure in front of your mouth and speak through his torso. Oh. Voice will be synthesized. Oh, that doesn't work. Hello. <laughs> 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 this doesn't work. I mean, it could be that it's like you know, like almost thirty years old. Maybe the uh, maybe there's some sort of like plastic membrane in there that yeah, doesn't work anymore. Maybe there's like a strip I gotta pull out. Hello. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there's a little echo. It's it did a little something, but I gotta get like real close. <laughs> I just feel weird making noises into the back of this toy. <laughs> this is some great podcasting right here. Yeah, yeah. I've almost got Annie out of the package. Is she okay? Well, she's got a sweet bow and arrow shooting feature, so oh, cool. I know we're gonna have fun with her. Because this is how you get boys to buy a toy of a girl. Give her a cool feature. Give her some weapons. See, I hate action features. I'm like that kid who always hated action features. Because, like, every Spider-Man I'd end up with would do some weird gimmick, and I could never just have Spider-Man. I had to have Spider-Man who did a weird backflip. It's it's forced play. It makes kids play the same action or adventure kind of thing over and over again. I hated it so much. Her head seems almost a, a tad big. It does. Now that you said it, like she looked like the most normal out of the group, though, I think. Like I, of the humans. Anyway. I wonder if any of these accessories are reused. It drives me nuts that this won't fit into his other hand. <laughs> like I'm just gonna be doing this for the rest of the video. I'm just, just gonna be trying to get him to hold that. Trying to get him to hold this and then stand with it for like two seconds. So she's got a quiver. She's got arrows. She's got a bow. Which is wacky because it's got like a handle or a finger guard. How do you put this in her hand? What? He's got like a weird foot situation going on. So I I will give them credit that she's articulated to look like she's going to fire this thing. That's pretty cool. And then I guess you can kind of move that hand out of the way. And if you notch... <laughs> the arrow it actually works it's supposed to trying to line it up here i mean <laughs> it keeps i keep missing the string is so tiny here we go yeah hold on. let's yeah. see if we can get dead there you go oh almost i mean you know if he was closer you would have got him let's try it again <laughs> i'm just gonna inch him forward a little see if you can get him it's actually really tricky to pull back because it's sort of like is running into her face. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Misfire. And they, there have been other toys like this. There was some Robin Hood stuff that had yeah. this kind of shooting I, action. I do commend them on having action features that still function 20 plus years later. Because like every single one of the, even like the, the weird ninja kick still worked. Yeah, that's true. Let me try it without her holding it, which I know is kind of lame, but. I mean, we're talking about Land of the Lost Toys from 30 years ago. I, I think can't even whole, use the word lame. I can't even say this is maybe less. This is more lame than it was the other way, because, like, it's not like a high bar. Oh, I shot way that past that, Yeah, that's like right, off, that's, that's a gone. decent accessory. Okay. Here we go. There's Annie. Yeah. Check her out. She looks like, uh, I forget. I can't remember. She looks like a uh, moaning myrtle. <laughs> All right, we. Oh, oh, you know what? I think that his club is just the one that comes with <laughs> Nim. 
<laughs> so yeah, it, it really like is it. part reusage. Yeah, yeah, it's just like just stick it in there. It's fine. Automatic club action. All right. He comes with a shield. That's kind of nice. I'm very curious to see how that goes. I'm sure this audio is terrible with this, like... With that, yeah, because you're, like, right by the microphone and scraping and cutting and scraping and cutting. I love it. Mm. All right. Oh, the, his, like, tray is all yellowed. It's, it's like that old. Yeah. So he's got a, a button on his back. Oh, okay. Some pretty good uh, flicking action there. Yeah. Let's see. So he's got a shield with just a clip on it. I, I'm not sure what this hand is for. Is it like a... Eh. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Come like, on. What, what are you doing? Urgh. It's weird because his hand is like permanently posed that way too. It's not like he can yeah, put it the other not, way. It's not articulated to, to be able to turn it. Yeah, it's like... And, uh, that, and that's not like the action feature. Like if that, yeah. if that was like a spring-loaded like discus throwing thing, it's you'd like, be like, oh, uh, yeah. It's like you pay the fine or you get the bunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's kind of fun, though. Yeah, actually, I, I dig him. I think if I bought a Land of Lost figure, I'd probably buy this guy. He's got the bonk action. <laughs> bonk. There we go. There we go. All right, the last one that I have here to open. Oh, and I kind of mentioned these have Bradley, like, $1.88 stickers on them. <laughs> uh, How much did you pay for them? More? Pro yeah, more than that. Not a whole lot more than that, but I think I paid around $5. Right for this? I think this will work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my nice. god, Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna open up Tasha here. It's weird how some of these, I can cut the plastic so much easier than other ones. I think the tray underneath kind of, the knife gets caught on the little insert sometimes. Yeah. Oh, this corner is always tough. There we go. All right. This is Tasha with running and rock throwing action? Yes. So... I do have to mention this. I, I have a coworker mm -hmm. whose son, his name is Kevin, and Kevin's fiance or wife at this point, his name is Tasha. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, when this lady is telling me some story about like the holiday room, she's like, "Oh, Kevin and Tasha came over." I get this little mental picture of Kevin and Tasha, and I'm like, "That's probably really that would be more exciting in real life if <laughs> if the land of the lost Kevin and Tasha showed up yeah, for the holiday." I could see that. Yeah. All right. So Tasha, which is actually a decent likeness of the suit, I mean, except for like the, these dumb little <laughs> tabs uh, on the, the feet yeah, so, she doesn't, fall so over. she doesn't fall over when yeah. she's doing her little so walking. I'll wind her up. Still works. Got that classic slow waddle, which isn't too bad for trying to mimic Ed Gale's performance there. Ah, Tasha. And then... Well, all right. She's just going to keep going. She's going to keep going. She's got her rock-throwing hand. She has boulders that have a hand cut out in them. That's probably for the best. Hold on, let me set Dad up. All right. <laughs> I like that he's the punching bag. Oh. Let's try another one. Oh. I could have sworn you had game. You know, throwing rocks is... Ah, uh, that was a better hope better height. Hope you don't live in a glass house. <laughs> no, that was no good. Good thing she comes with a lot of yeah, boulders. She comes with like a bunch of boulders. Almost had him that time. All right. Did you? This is it. This is it. This is the last one. Uh, well, still you, couldn't that get him. time you almost had him. This one. This is the last one. This one hung out. I couldn't get him. Your turn to try. All right. I'm going to re angle him so it's less. Awkward. I'm just gonna gather whatever stones I can find that are still within range. <laughs> that didn't fall off the it table. Didn't roll off the table into the land of the lost. <laughs> See how this arm works? Okay. I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better because I missed my first. Sh I have to get to figure out the. It's not a real accurate science here. I mean, it little, lobs them a little funny. I'm feeling a little more foolish now. Mm. That one almost got him. That Skated one almost right got him. right by his knees. Come on, last one. Oh, 
Uh, like I bent the arm back wrong. Oh no! Oh, God. Now I can't even get it on there. <laughs> I, well, you hit him. I hit him. You hit him. I hit him dead on. All it's right. like right in his feet. Bragging rights. Bragging rights. <laughs> I. I I didn't realize where this uh, backpack was. Really. This is not one of the talking backpacks from this line. What is that from? I don't even know. It's been floating around my house for a while. But it, this is one of these. <laughs> one of the. It's not quite the same. You got to hold it up to the mic, though, so people can. They, do you remember these ridiculous sounds? Yeah, this is open fire, and there's some yeah. guns. But that's I'm that's what I imagine these talking backpacks being similar to. 100. percent You know those this cheesy is, uh, God. recordings. There was a line of guys that had like video game faces. Do you remember those? I don't know if it's from that Maybe. or something else. I don't know. But there was there were a lot of toys in this era. GI Joe yeah. having Sonic fighters. Yeah. Uh, so it certainly wasn't like a unique trend, but not really something that Land of the Lost needed. I don't think. I mean, there's Tiger Electronics. Tiger so, Electronics. Like, it makes sense for Tiger to be like, we gotta, we gotta in. get some electronics in this. But uh, I mean, as much as I just keep saying how much I hate action features, I gotta commend the line on having so many that are at least functional and fun. Yeah, like they're stupid and silly, and I generally would prefer not to have them. But like, I've been having a good time with some of these. Like, I really like this guy. I already forgot his name. That's Nim. Nim. I like Nim. Like Nimrod. Yeah, I like that he can just bonk his buddy from behind and like you know, also get her. Beat Tasha, she deserves it. Yeah. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> I'm just gonna there we go. He wins. He's uh king. by and far the best figure in this line. King of the land of the lost. King of the land of the lost. It's Nim. I like his little pay me hand. I like his bonking action. Like he stands on his own, which some of them don't want to do. Uh, just, just overall, he's the only figure in the line that I think is a is a overall <laughs> win. This is nothing bad about him. I really enjoy him. He's probably the only one. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy him today on eBay. You're gonna hunt down a Nim. I'm gonna hunt down Nim on eBay later. All right. Well, let us know if you have any <laughs> Land of the Lost memories, guys. Uh, I just had to document this toy line. I've, yeah. I've been sitting on this for a long time. You got to get Scarface. I do. You can't like. I, I know you. You joke. You you joke about like. Oh, I might get rid of these. I'm debating yeah. parting with them. But like, you can't. What's gonna happen is you're gonna sell them, and then I'll find Scarface. And then you'll find Scarface, pissed. and you're gonna feel real silly. Yeah. <laughs> That's always how it goes. All right. Thanks for hanging on the peg with us, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> but there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one out. and done. That's yeah. it. It's sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs>